Hey guys, I thought I'd uh, follow up on one of the projects that I haven't looked at for quite some time and that is the AP Ever Solar Charge Controller to Wi-Fi um, using the RS485 um, port that is on the bottom of these controllers. Um, I was just talking to someone this morning actually who was looking at getting into solar and I always think these are a great first step. For about £20 you can pick up a 10 amp one and I think it only goes up to something like 35 36 for a 30 amp one. Um, PWM admittedly but um, that's still a hell of a lot of bang for your buck especially with the monitoring that you get built in as well. So as you'll have seen in the previous projects we had the RS485 to Wi-Fi um, which was done on a breadboard and then Adam Welch kindly um, knocked up a PCB um, in bit of a collaboration with that which worked excellently um, one of the things that always got me though was having to take a network cable um, such as this um, with the need to then cut off one of the ends and then on the board was to then solder it in the middle to these connections um, and you can see the connections there so you've got ground uh, V uh, voltage and um, A and B from the RS-485 Turn that around, go around there, um, and that worked well. Um, but it was a pain, and you had to get your network cable. You had to cut it in half, um, check which colour was which wire, and then put it back together. So what I decided was to do a new version of the board that uses a. Um, what I decided to do was do a new version of the board that uses a RJ45 network connector. And what I've come up with is this little box which does the same thing, but kind of tried to make it as product like as I could. What you can do is take your RJ45, your standard network cable, take that, so you have one end of it in there, and then the other end, I'll put that back on camera, just plug straight into your connector. Doesn't need to be a um, crossover cable or anything special like that, just a regular cheap old network cable. Uh, most people should have lying around. And that, oh, there you go, the top falls off, um, and there you go, you'll see inside, we're still using the ESP01, still using the plug-in module for the um, RS, RS485 to um, serial, and the small power adapter there. Um, and a small 3D printer case I came up with, you just plug that in there. Um, it's just a push fit, it's not designed to sit upside down or anything like that, the idea is, what I've done is in the garage, a couple of sticky pads on the wall, put that there, and that lid's going to stay there, it's fine. Um, so what I thought I'd do was just run through, maybe just soldering one of these boards up. Um, if I zoom this in a bit, and I'll move him up, um, back out. There we go. So one of the main things was to get the um, built-in RJ45 connector. Can't even see where my camera is. Yeah, and that was um, the kind of crux of the project, as it were. Um, and it was a right pain making sure you can source these. that will have the identical pin out. Um, so they should just slide in here. And the beauty, it's a great part of solder because it's got the two little tabs on the bottom. And that just clamps in there and it gives it a really good physical, physical connection on the board. So you can yank that around a bit and you're good. Um, you still need 5 pin and a 4 pin what you do need to do with a 5 pin is to pull out the 2nd and the 3rd pin um, I've got ahead of myself a bit there by putting that in so what I tend to find is best to do is to put the, the 4 pin in and the 3 pin um, I actually did this some time ago but um, and I did sell a couple on Tindy, um, but I hadn't got around to doing a video, um, and one of the reasons was I had a few problems with these modules. Now, when you're sourcing them, I've been getting the ones that have got XY017 on the back, um, and I think I hit lucky the first time I got these, and they uh, they worked out the box, worked really well, very reliably. Um, using this method, it worked even more reliably than the old version. Um, but I did get a bunch that had 
RS-485, the TDL. Now, I cannot guarantee a correlation, um, but one of those I had tried failed, um, which was about two of those I tried which failed, which was a bit of a pain in the behind, and, and when you're trying to troubleshoot and pin things down, and I was on forever and a day trying to track down what was the issue. Um, but my advice is if you do want to do this manually, is to try the XY107 TDL ones. So what I tend to do is, if I solder one pin on, yeah, and if we do one the other side as well, I'm not quite at the uh, big Clive level of soldering yet, um, but I'm not too bad. Um, then I generally do a visual check and you can see that that's way out of whack. So since we've only done one pin and the top is not soldered, we can pull him back there, and we can pull him back there, and this one a little bit more maybe. Okay, and you'll see that is a lot straighter there. What we'll do is, we'll just go through and just solder up the other points. Now, like I say, the idea was to make this as plug and play as possible um, and almost product esque um, so that when you get your board, you can. Hook it up to your Wi-Fi. There's one little pull down to do if it's not already configured, um, just to say that it's using an ESP01 chip, and then that's it. It should it sh should be good to communicate, and anything else is just client side. Um, so I use SoCat because I'm using a Raspberry Pi, um, which is reporting to Grafana. Um, using the PHP logger script that I've shown in my earlier videos. Um, you can either use that or you can use the standard client. Yes, I should have a fume extractor as well in case anyone comments. Um, yeah, you can use the standard client and you need some use like hardware, virtual serial port or similar. Um, which again I've covered in previous videos and I'll link below. Um, the next thing I've got is just a small Five volt or three point three volt adapter. Again, if we get one of these in, I try and get it so it's roughly similar length pin wise to the others. So if I again never let a man handle them too much, but um, I have unfortunately made it so it's a bit of a tight squeeze in there. I think on a future revision, I would quite likely um, make that a bit bigger. So we'll just do the last few parts. Now there has still been a, a decent amount of interest for these, so I presume people are using them. Again, I normally just do one pin. And then reflow that one pin then you can see and line it up. And then we can go back and do the other pins. I think what I'm most likely to do is release the, the files on GitHub if there's interest. Um, and then people could maybe do their own. I am also tempted to look at doing another revision. I've got this as 1.03. Um, and I've got Adam's name on the back because he did a lot of work on this as well. So, you know, fair's fair. And I'll, I'll link to Adam's channel below as well. He's a great guy, does some good work. So, so the last one to do is the. RJ45 connector, um, and there you go, that just slots in nicely, um, and like I say, it's a, with having the um, two plastic prongs that go right through the board, gives a good mechanical fix, so if you must make yanks the cable, um, it's not going to rip the straight off the board, and it's through hole as well, rather than surface mount, which greatly helps, but like I say, those help as well. It's a pretty quick board to build. We're up and running there pretty much already. It's a snug fit in the board, <laughs> I will say that. Um, it's 3D printed, but you've got a bit of wiggle room, excuse the noise there. Um, oh my, this is uh, one of the better fitting ones. You don't see me ramming it in. Um, 
And so there you go, and I've, I've put a little couple of screw holes, um, which are almost lined up on the bottom there, but yeah. And now we just put one screw in here. To be honest, it's barely needed. Um, and you've got your ESP01. I've kept with using this um, due to price factor, you know, they're nice and cheap. Um, but also, if I was to put this on the board, um, just space wise, um, so that I couldn't have that screw hole there. Um, in the distance of things and we already need a little bit height anyway because of the RJ45 connector um, so it's not really an issue and it gives it a bit of distance just for the antenna and everything so I'm more than likely to stick with these but I may look at doing another custom PCB there without this and without the um, the power converter as well and there you go that's your board built up and then you'll just um, plug that in with the Ethernet cable, um, configure up SoCat or ho virtual hardware serial port, and you have your little um, box, and that works pretty reliably. Um, what I have done is the A and B pins are using um, actually paired up to two pins each on the RJ45. So rather than just use one set of those, I've used both pins. So slight bit redundancy in there if there ever was an issue with one of the the, the pins coming out on the cable. Um, but also just gives it a nice strong connection and when I've been using this it's been pretty reliable um, so yeah so like I say I'll pop a link down below I'm gonna probably put a couple on Tindy um, and then if anyone wants to purchase it it'll be there for you and um, alternatively um, if there's enough interest I'll look at putting the files on uh, github but uh, thanks for watching guys uh, please feel free to like subscribe and I'll catch you later